Okay. So now it is just sitting there. Is it doing anything? No. It is just standing there holding this pathogen via this antigen. And I have said it again and again before I would repeat it that a pathogen can demonstrate a lot of antigens on it. So it is not necessary that just one antigen is showing and only one T cell receptor or B cell or, or APC is engaged. There are going to be many other, I'm going to make smaller cells here, there are going to be many other T cells which are connected to various other parts of this pathogen. So they're all connected there, they're all holding on to it. So this is like one criminal in the society and it has come in and many, many of the citizens or cops or army people, they are holding on to that one criminal. Now, this T cell, this cytotoxic T cell is not active. What does that mean? That means it's not really doing anything, it's just holding on to that pathogen and sitting there. How do we make it active? We make it active by stimulating it with IL-2. So in this case, one stimulation is here. T cell receptor connected to a pathogen is a primary interaction that is happening. The co-stimulation for this, the double check, shall I start working, shall I start fighting, that is going to come from the IL-2. And the IL-2 is coming from where? From the helper T cell. So again, remember helper T cell, keep an eye on them. They are the one which are orchestrating this whole mechanism. They are the one which are helping with this mechanism. So, okay, let's see. This IL-2 will be acting on the cytotoxic T cells. So when that acts on the cytotoxic T cell, the cytotoxic T cell will become active. Now when cytotoxic T cell becomes active, again we are doing, our lecture today is not this mechanism, we have talked about those before. The lecture today is what are the functions of the T cells. So we have reached now the cytotoxic T cell. We'll come back to the helper T cell when they're going, going to be going towards the B cell. We'll come back to that in a second. But we have reached the cytotoxic T cell. So let's see what are the functions a cytotoxic T cell perform. So let me name the functions before and then we'll talk about them. First of all, a cytotoxic T cell can work with the cells that have gotten pathogens in them. That is one. Second, a cytotoxic T cell is very important in the graft rejection. So the organ transplant, the actual thing that rejects the organs is the cytotoxic T cells with the help of helper T cell. Remember this, helper T cell has to help all. They have to help cytotoxic. So you can always say, for the cytotoxic T cells function, we need helper T cell, except in one or two cases, we'll talk about that. Similarly, for the pathogen over here, for the delayed hypersensitivity, you can say we need hep hep helper T cell. Without the helper T cell, you don't get the delayed hypersensitivity. That is what happens in the old people. What happens in the old people is that they are, and the folks with the, uh, with the AIDS disease, or the people whose immune system is suppressed by giving uh, medicines, for example, people with the organ transplants, their helper T cells are low. So when the pathogen comes in, you know a person who is aged would not show the tuberculin test reaction. Why? Because when the, when the pathogen comes in and macrophage has to attack it, before that helper T cell has to activate that system. It has to amplify the system. It has to release gamma interferon. It has to proliferate. And when that helper T cell is not doing its function, this thing is not going to do its function either, and so there'll be no, uh, no disc formation and no reaction. Similarly, in AIDS patient, helper T cells are down, and that is why the infections are not controlled. Similarly, in the patients who are immunosuppressed, deliberately, why are they immunosuppressed? Because they've gotten an organ transplant, or they're immunosuppressed because they have some uh, fulminating um, immune disease. And in those patients, again, the infections or helper T cell function goes down. So remember this, they are the soul of the immune system, the helper T cells. Now going back here to, towards the cytotoxic T cell, so one thing that the cytotoxic T cell is going to do, so I'm going to change this mechanism a little bit here. So instead of just connecting it to the pathogen, I will connect this to a normal cell, one cell. This is a very sad cell 
why is this sad it's actually crying a little bit and why is this cell crying this cell is infected by these pathogens it is right so it is in infected by this pathogen and it is showing the the protein on its surface through MHC1 remember this now MHC1 over here we talked about MHC2 with the professional APCs this is MHC1 and that cell has interacted with the T cell cytotoxic with T cytotoxic cell now is this in the absence of IL-2 this cytotoxic T cell is doing nothing to this poor infected cell but as soon as IL-2 reaches the cytotoxic T cell, cytotoxic T cell will become active. What is the function it is going to do? What it is going to do is this. It's going to release perforins. Perforins. Perforins are chemical substances. These are proteins released by the cytotoxic T cells. These are also released by the natural killer cells. And what they do is they create holes in the cell membrane. So once the cell, that is why they are called perforins, they create perforations. So once the holes are created, the cellular substances will be released. So when those cellular substances are released out of the cell, the cell dies. No, normal. So natural killer cell and cytotoxic T cell both do this thing. That they would cause, they would release perforins and they would cause the cell to, to lyse. The only thing is, natural killer cell does not need the help of a helper T cell to do this. Natural killer cell can do this when it sees that there is less MHC1 present on the surface of the cells. This is also a very important mechanism. Let's just look at that. Natural killer cell is also a type of the lymphocytes that has broken rank from the lymphocytes and that has gone into the innate arm of the immune system and does its own work. It's a freelancer. It, doesn't not, it does not want to be acted upon by the rest of the cells. So how does the natural killer cell work? So that is a digression here, but I want to do that. So let's talk about the natural killer cell for a second. This guy, I always make it as this little pervert, right? So this pervert guy, this NK cell, is looking at this guy. And what he does is he touches, remember, it touches every cell. It massages them, it touches them, and it sees the, the amount of MHC1 molecule present on a cell surface. And what is the importance over there? The MHC normally are about 30 to 60,000 MHC molecule present on the surface of a cell. When a cell is infected with cancer, or it has some intracellular pathogen, viruses, bacteria, what these things, and especially viruses, what these things do is they change the cell's machinery to make proteins to make their own proteins. That is what a virus does, right? It infects a cell and hijacks its machinery to make proteins and makes more viruses. In that process, this poor cell's need of making its proteins is gone. A need is not gone, rather its capability to make its own proteins is gone. So when that happens, of course, all proteins of this cell would be reduced, including MHC1 that will be reduced. So when the MHC1 is reduced, natural killer cell is sitting there and trying to massage and saying, oh, do you got MHC1? And if the MHC1 is not present, what it does is, it does the same thing. It is going to release perforins. Perforins would create holes in the cell, and that cell will be lysed. Why is this important? Here is the thing. Please don't forget this. This is important for USMLE, and this is important for your practice. These, this mechanism here, will only work if there is MHC1 present on the surface of a sick cell. This will only work if a cell with the cancer or a cell with the virus or bacteria has MHC1 on its surface and can present the antigen on it. Only then this mechanism would help the cell. But if the cell is so sick if it has become so sick that it cannot manufacture its proteins anymore, then who is going to act on it? Then who is going to help it? This mechanism is not going to help because this mechanism needs MHC1 and TCR receptor interaction. So then who is going to help? Natural killer is going to help. 
So it's such cells that have become so sick that they cannot even present the MIC or, or the antigen on their surface, these cells will be taken care of by N NK cells. Do not forget this. This is so many uh, questions in USMLE that I see, uh, which have this basic concept underlying, and then they're trying to see if you know the NK cells function. OK, so the other thing which cytotoxic does and NK does is the granzymes. So one is perforins. Perforins create holes in the cell membrane and the cell lysis. The other thing is granzymes. Granzymes. So granzymes, and I'll make that granzyme from here as well. Granzyme and granzyme. What is a granzyme? Granzymes are an enzymes or chemical substances or proteins that are released by both cytotoxic T cells and NK cells that actually go into the cell, the cell which is sick. And what they do is they do two or three type of functions in there. Number one, granzymes go in and break the cellular mechanism to make further proteins. So that's a very, they go and destroy the cell's interior. Why? Because they don't want the cell to be living anymore. They want it to be gone. It is a sick cell. Kill it. So to kill that cell, granzymes go inside the cell and they break the cell's machinery to make proteins. So that is one. So they cause issues in the cell. Second, they cause apoptosis. They induce apoptosis in the cell. What does that mean? Remember caspases? Caspases are the proteins which, when present, would make the cell kill itself. Cell commits suicide. Cell dies by the caspases. So when granzymes go in the cell, they activate caspases. So as soon as caspases are activated, the cell would commit suicide, or it would do apoptosis, and it would die. So these are the functions of the granzymes. Granzymes do some other functions too, but that is what is happening here. So how is this cytotoxic T cell is going to kill this sick cell? It is going to either kill it with perforins. It's not that it would do one or two. It, it can actually do both. Kill it with perforins and, perf or, and granzymes. So that is how this cell will be taken care of. So this cell is gone. This was a cancerous cell, or this was a cell that had a pathogen in it done. So one more effector function is done, which is through the cytotoxic T cell. So here, what is the primary interaction? T cell receptor. What is the secondary stimulation for the cytotoxic T cell? It is the interleukin-2. So keep an eye on the primary interaction and the co-stimulant. Here, the stimulant or co-stimulant is IL-2. The primary interaction is T cell receptor working with the uh, MHC, and one thing I forgot to put here, of course, this is MHC. That means it should be working with CD4, or oh, sorry, CD8. CD8 molecule. So CD8 molecule interacts with the MHC1 and with the T cell receptor, and the IL2 is the co-stimulant. Remember, I think you do the all T cells, regardless of their type, cytotoxic or helper, all T cells exhibit CD3, right? So I should make that there, and I should make that here, CD3. What is the function of this CD3? The function of the CD3 is it lives beside the T cell receptor, and it helps to transduce. What does that mean? To carry. It helps to transduce the message that the T cell receptor has become active. It takes that message. It's a second messenger system. So it brings the message into the cell, and cell becomes active and does whatever next is needed. For example, in this case, it would start releasing perforins and granzymes. In this case, it would start making IL-2 receptors in IL-2, and the cell goes in its path.